Let's go to that speech today at lunchtime from Defence Minister Richard Miles announcing a new $330 billion defence investment program. But wait, it is not all that it seems. In that, he says, was an additional $50 billion, but it's over the next decade. To modernise the ADF with new missiles, drones, ships and aerial defence systems. For more on the detail, not the spin, I'm joined by the Australian's foreign editor, Greg Sheridan. Well, this $50 billion, I thought, geez, it's good, it's substantial, we need it now, the world's a pretty troubling place, but only $6 billion of the 50s actually in the budget over the next four years, Greg. It's smoke and mirrors yet again. You're absolutely right, Peter, and it's great to be with you. Um, look, this is both depressing and comic and recurrent and ridiculous. So the government says it's going to increase capital defence expenditure by a huge figure, 53 to $63 billion over the next 10 years. Over the next four years, the increase is only $5.7 billion. That means 90% or more than 90% of the increase it's announced is beyond the forward estimates, almost all of it in the second half of the decade. That means the Albanese government will significantly increase defence for the expenditure for the first time in its third or fourth term. Now, that's just ridiculous. And the, the increase over the next uh, four years is about 2.4% a year. This is a government which is doing nothing. And to just give you one other uh, example, Peter, amidst mm. all these mm. billions and billions and billions of dollars flying around, Miles says, and guess what? We're really seized of the urgency of drones. We're going to invest $1.1 billion over the next 10 years in drones. So every dopey, slow, 100 years of solitude, mad defence program continues on. The whole world, except our Defence Department, knows that drones are the thing, and we're going to spend $1 billion on them over 10 years. Well, shiver me timbers. That's going to terrify our enemies. We spend more on paper clips for the public service across 10 years Absolutely. than we do on that drone. I mean, that, that, you know the scale of the federal government. I mean, that is just paltry sort of money. So you, you do, do us a favour here. Reshape this announcement for us. What do we need right now? What should have been immediate and urgent and announced by Miles today? So, Peter, we have two tasks. We've got to uh, create a defence force straight away and we've got to create a long-term defence force. And the two can and should go hand in hand. What do we need straight away? We need lots of drones. Ukraine is going to manufacture a 1,000 different types of drones this year. We don't have a single armed drone. So let's start making, and we make drones for Ukraine. So let's buy from Australian companies armed military drones. The government has already wasted two years and is going to waste another year before it decides on a new frigate. Let's decide on a new frigate straight away and buy it straight away, being made overseas. And instead of a light frigate, let's get a heavy frigate. The government has abolished the fourth squadron of joint strike fighters. Let's reinstate that purchase. We can get those quickly and expand the Air Force from 100 fast jets to 123 or 125 fast jets and put long range missiles on them. We make a lot of, uh, the government makes a big fuss about building missiles in Australia. The only missile we're actually committed mm. to building so far is a short range army land attack um, artillery rocket. Let's ask the Americans for permission to build missiles which we actually use, maritime long distance missiles. And then let's upgrade all our existing platforms. Of course, we should have replaced the Anzacs by now. But why did the government abandon upgrading the Anzacs so that we have no uh, capable frigates over the next 10 years. Why did the government abandon putting Tomahawk missiles on the Collins? Let's go ahead and do that straight away to make them more formidable because they're still going to be our main submarine for the next 10 or probably 15 or 20 years. You could do all that straight away and it wouldn't compromise any long-term uh, plan you'd have. In fact, it'd help your long-term plan. Mm. But the government is determined to spend no additional money on defence and it's long-range spending commitments, you know, they're like Star Trek commitments. Who believe, Do you think for a minute, Peter, that, that Richard Miles is going to be Defence Minister in 10 years' time? Oh, Greg, I couldn't possibly say. 
Um, just, just quickly, ASPE, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, this issue of a funding review ha has really got ahead of steam. We know the Chinese embassy in Canberra not so long ago had a whole list of demands. One of those was to defund bodies like ASPE. We all laughed that off and said how ridiculous it, China's not going to get the demands. But then we have this review. The cutting of the funding is on the table. If I was cynical, I'd say we are dancing to Beijing's tune here. Yeah, Peter, this government is starting to go very bad on China. So Richard Miles in his speech today only made one reference to China and that was in quoting a previous document. So he claims to have profound transformation of defence. The only justification for that is China, but we're not allowed to mention China anymore. The government booted out the Director General of ASIO and the Director of ASIS from permanent membership of the National Security Council, an unprecedented and bizarre move but very much in line with what all the China apologists have been arguing for, decrease the influence of the security agencies. And then the Chinese detest the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. I'd have to tell you, I don't think ASPE is as good today as it was a couple of years ago when it had Peter Jennings, Michael Shoebridge and Marcus Hellier, but it's still a very good think tank. And the very fact that the Chinese demanded that it be shut down should guarantee its safety, instead of which the government has now got mm. a review of federal government funding of strategic think tanks. It's also shortened the funding term of ASPE so that ASPE can't make any long-term uh, spending commitments. And it's demanded that ASPE show it its documents on defence before it published them. Now, if it does act against ASPE, that's just another one of China's 14 demands, which the Albanese government has acceded to. I find that astonishing and very worrying. I agree with you on the worry, Greg. I think uh, this is hugely significant. Thank you for your time. Thanks for that terrific analysis.